Morning. Happy Friday. Today is January 24th. Quick Friday edition here before I wrap up the week as I have a few things to share with you. One of them being the Imperial Cycle Frames and getting them out the door to their new owners, as well as a mock-up on the ground with that frame as promised in the last segment. While doing all that, I found myself multitasking and resurrecting a frame that's been laying around the shop for almost a year now to date. Getting it ready for its new owner, and I'll set you up with the details on that before we jump into it. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and see what's happening with Peak Cycles and the mock-up on that Imperial frame. The new and improved Imperial Cycles frame with the shorter wheelbase. Still need to get the single cantilever in there, but this is just a mock-up on the ground, tacked, just to see where we're at, and so far, everything looks pretty good. It's a reason for that clamp right there holding the rear wheel in. I didn't want to bolt down on those dropouts, being they're just tacked in. This thing is bad to the bone. I may just have to make one for myself. A few still shots, as sometimes the video doesn't capture what photographs do. Fantastic job, Eric, of designing that frame. I know I joked at the end about building one for myself for now. I'll admire it from here as I have way too many projects going on, but man, that's a good looking frame. Meanwhile, like I said, I was multitasking on another frame. I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you. I'll jump back in, fill you in on details on what's going on with that. Just finished welding up the first Imperial Cycles frame. Got that single cantilever in. And while it's cooling on the frame jig, I will be multitasking, working on this. <laughs> yep, same frame as my green machine, kind of a long story. I did some alterations that required me to cut the triangle completely off from the cantilevers and loop tails. And once I finished my original green machine, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to stick with what I have. So this has been sitting around collecting dust ever since. There's the other side. Before anybody asks, it has been sold. It was sold a long time ago. And now I'm going to finish it. Basically I need to weld up the entire triangle, the bottom bracket, and then I will reposition the loop tails and cantilevers back on and get this one done. Like I said, it's a long story. The frame for the original green machine was completed and going through the cosmetic stage of which I realized there were some revisions I wanted to make on the frame, but it was too late because the frame was already powder coated. So I went ahead and started a second frame knowing I wasn't going to finish in time. Completed the build for the original green machine, debuted it at OBC, and then after OBC I thought to myself, you know what, I like this bike, I'm going to keep it. So the frame I'm working on now sat around the shop for almost a year and I'm finishing it up now to go to its new owner and what needed to be done is what I'm going to show you on this next segment. So check it out. As mentioned this entire frame was pretty much welded up before I cut the triangle out which is the reason for the cantilevers going into the loop tails there. It was all one piece. Normally it wouldn't be that way if I was building this frame from scratch. It would be multiple pieces sleeved. With cutting the triangle out, I had to cut the chain stays here. We'll need to recope those for a nice tight fit. We'll re weld the cantilevers to the triangle here and up front. We'll duplicate everything for the other side. Get everything leveled up. And then check back on this in a bit. So we're going to pause here and I apologize if you are not familiar with what I'm talking about in the green machine. I'm going to show you a few stills here. So that's the green machine with the tail dragger type frame and the classic loop tails trying to combine two concepts together. Debuted at OBC 2019. I build one bike a year for myself and debuted at OBC and this year is no different. Before we move on to the next segment, I had somebody chime in asking what type of steel I use on my frames. So let's go ahead and keep it going. 
This here is a little patina from sitting around the shop. Where I get my material comes very oiled and clean from competitive metals. I use 16 gauge or 0.065 gauge mild steel on the entire frame except for this bottom tube right here. I use 13 gauge or 0.095 gauge for reasons of our frames sit very low and if you bottom out shouldn't have too much damage. Yes there's chromoly, stronger, aluminum, lighter, but for the money these are cruiser bikes. Most of us are running gears anyway. Just wanted to clarify that when I say for the money that doesn't mean we're being cheap. <laughs> Chromoly and alloy can be quite expensive and increase the retail price of these custom frames to two and three times as much as what they are now. Not knocking anybody who wants to use it, just saying mild steel is totally fine and the gauge I'm using is very similar to any over-the-counter beach cruiser in the retail market. Let's keep it going. Okay, I think we got a handle on this. <laughs> it's what we call a hack job. I really don't prefer doing it, but sometimes it just calls for chopping up a frame to make it right. Just don't prefer doing it with loop tails. Those clamps are holding everything in place. We're all leveled out and centered. Everything looks good. Let's go ahead and tack this up. Having a little fun with the video editing there. I have since welded up that frame. And before we sign off, I wanted to mention one last thing. And that is good luck to my brosk, Mr. Wim, who submitted some artwork to the Paint or Die that is happening in Los Angeles tomorrow, put on by Danny D. If you are in the area, I highly recommend it. Some fantastic work from some amazing artists. That's pretty much going to wrap it up. Hope you enjoyed today's version of what's happening at Peak Cycles. And until next time, make it a killer day!